Well, good morning and uh, welcome to another photo adventure. Got the decaf. Mm. Oh yeah, so we're all decafed up, we're good to go. Let's go and break out this new lens. on site and we are at one of my local lookouts and uh, this is looking out over Port Stephens here where I live uh, and today we're breaking out a new lens. To be honest I've had it in my kit for a little while, I've been using it, I've been testing it, deciding whether it's going to stay in my landscape photography kit and today is the day where I'm giving this lens the thumbs up. It's going to stay in my kit full time. Absolutely love this lens. So uh, let's break that out and uh, I'll talk you through why this is my new favorite landscape photography lens. All right, so we're all set up here and you can see I've got the big boy out, the new lens, the 100 to 400. Really, really happy with this thing. As I mentioned, I've been using it for about three or four weeks now in my kit, and I've decided it's gonna make a, a, a full-time appearance in my camera bag. Really, really love this. So this will be replacing uh, a 70 to 200. I used to carry around the F4, which is a nice light uh, telephoto lens as well, but this just gives me so much more reach, so much more, it's so much more versatile, and for not much more size or weight. Uh, the other beautiful thing about this as well is you can add the 2x teleconverter on it or the 1.4 and it really makes for a long lens. You know, getting 400 to 800 mil with that 2x teleconverter on it just makes it so useful in such this little compact format. And uh, why I really love it and why we're up here at the lookout today is because, as you guys know, I love to pick out the little details in the landscape. And there's some epic light happening out there at the moment, so I'm just going to grab a few quick shots while we get started. There's some really cool light happening out there at the moment. What we've got, we've got about 80% cloud cover and we've got this big rain swell moving along the edge of the coast there and the sun is just coming through some of the rain and the, the low cloud there, just cutting through around Yakabar, which is that other big mountain you can see out there. And it's just looking absolutely epic right now. Really, really cool. So let me show you on the back of the camera here. You can see I'm getting about 1.6 F8 ISO 100 and we've got that cool light there. And I'm just panning around back and forth, trying to work out what my composition is going to be. Probably going to go out to about 200 mil there. And uh, we can use that play between that interesting light coming there behind Yakabar. I'm probably going to crop out a bit of this foreground, I'd say. But um, that's looking really, really cool. Happy with that. If I show you, that's 100 mil, okay? And that is 400 mil. The range that you have on this is just absolutely amazing. I'm going to take one at that as well. I really love having that amount of focal length and such a compact lens. It's so cool. I just love this new lens. What's so neat about this long telephoto photography too is that you're just panning around, zooming, picking out the little details, zooming in on little areas that look interesting, taking different shots. So you're forever making new compositions. It's just such a really fun way to photograph things. And check this out now. Oh, this composition's really, really cool. We've got that light coming through on the background. We've got Yakabar in the foreground. But right in the back there, there's uh, a couple of other, it's actually Broughton Island. It's an island out off the back there that's in the light. It's just absolutely beautiful. I think once I crop this to a longer panorama type crop, it's just going to look absolutely magical. Really happy how this is looking. Just epic. Just epic light this morning. This is what I love about photography is you just never, never know. Like it was looking like it was going to be like a pretty grey old morning. And now we've got this beautiful epic light peering through the clouds here. Just looking amazing. Absolutely awesome. And it's just getting better and better. That hole out there is actually letting more and more light through as we speak. It's just cool. So I'm just gonna keep shooting here. Same settings now. 
I'm zooming in here, oh, there's some really nice light coming in on the edge of the mountain now. Let's see if we can get that. I'm gonna just pan down a little bit. I just wanna get a bit more water in there as well. Let's have a look here. Beautiful. So I just really love the tones at the moment. The water is this beautiful blue tone and the beautiful orange light coming through is just looking absolutely amazing. And as that light moving behind the headland and across Broughton Island, it's just creating for such a, a beautiful scene. Absolutely beautiful. So look, I'm really, really happy with those. We've got those in the bag. We've got some epic, epic light before. I think what we'll do is we'll jump back in the studio and I'll just uh, talk you through my final thoughts on this lens and show you a few of the images I got. All right, good people, we're back in the studio now. So let me show you through these lenses so we can compare them. So what I wanted to show you first, so that's the 70 to 200 F4. That was the original lens I used to carry around in my landscape kit. Um, it's been a really good lens, perfect. But yeah, as I said, I think I've outgrown the focal length and I found limitations. While it was nice having 70 mil, I found that um, 200 sometimes would limit me uh, for picking up those details that I really wanted to get in close. And here is the, the 2.8 version of that. And you can see it's a much bigger lens, heftier lens. So I never used to carry around this 2.8. This is actually quite a new lens for me as well. But um, I, I've got this more for doing video work and things like that, which, you know, having the 2.8 getting those shallow depth of field for interviews and stuff is really really cool and you can see the comparison between this 100 to 400 in this hand and the 70 to 200 2.8 there's actually not a whole lot of difference between them like if you hold them lengthwise they're very similar maybe it's slightly longer but um and slightly heavier but not a whole lot so I mean, if you're carrying around at 70 to 2.8, .2 actually switching over to this lens for your landscape kit would be nothing. It would be really, really easy because it's pretty much the same size. Now, if I was to compare this to the F4 version of the 7200 that I was carrying, you can see there's a significant difference there. Um, they're way bigger filter size and length, overall length isn't too much. You can see it's just a little bit longer there really. But um, all in all, I'm really, really happy about the size and adding this to the kit it hasn't added much weight but it's really added a lot of versatility to the different focal ranges I can get while I'm in the field so yeah really really cool stuff I'm really really happy with that lens and like I said it's going to definitely staying in my kit all right let's just jump over here now and I'll just show you through the images and I've got a really really cool example of something I want to show you so here's all the images so that's the original one there we took when that sun started to break through and uh, here's a panorama I took a little bit later and you can see as the light was changing everything was moving to the left of the screen the rain swall that was moving with creating this atmosphere with the light of the the sunrise there was moving all to the left of the screen so moving up the coast and uh, you can see that's the close-up I took which I really think is cool uh, I think that was out about 350 mil that one so you know having that extra focal length I wouldn't have been able to get a shot like this even with uh, my older kit so you know having that extra 200 mil is just awesome in your bag 200 mil of focal length so over the 70 to 200 and you can see here the light was moving up the coast and I actually like this shot better and we'll do a comparison in a minute but um and here's the final big panorama of the whole scene there so you know I worked the scene pretty well got a couple of different compositions but what I really wanted to show you is look at this scene here okay and then look at this scene here so we've got this one where the lights over to the right it was a bit earlier on and then this one where the lights over to the left hand side giving the image more depth now when you look at this one the light placement and the intensity of the light is actually causing this composition to be unbalanced okay and why why that is if you see on the right hand side while it's still a bit of light back here and with a bit of post processing i could probably bring that out a lot a lot more but i intentionally left it just for this example okay so with a bit of post processing i could probably make that area brighter and um, tone down this area a little bit and that's something i would definitely do and the reason why it's unbalanced at the moment so the brightest spot is up here okay where your eye is naturally drawn to and we've also got the large just object on the right hand side so it makes this composition unbalanced but if we look at this one now so we've got our largest uh, object on the right hand side but we've got the brightest area and the, the most saturated color on the left hand side and not only that is it giving a balance
balance between this main large headland here it's also adding to the depth of the scene you know because it allows you to, to come into the scene have a wander around see this big element and you end up back over in this area in the brightest most saturated area of the scene so you can see how light can really affect your composition there in that example where the, the light was on the same side as one of our major elements and is really unbalancing the frame. So when the light moved further to the left, it um, really helped give depth to the image and added that more balanced composition between that heavy element on the on the right and the light at the back on the left and also giving the image lots of depth. So light is a really important thing to consider when you're composing your scene. As well as your main subject, your supporting elements, always take into account what your light's gonna be doing as well because that's often where you'll have the most intense saturated colors which will draw your eye. It's also where the brightest area often can be as well. So that'll help draw your eye, particularly when you're shooting directly into the sun or you're getting some side light coming from one side of the scene or the other. All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed another fun photo adventure. And uh, look, if you're looking to buy a new lens and you're looking for a telephoto for your landscape photography, don't go past that 100 to 400. Like I said, it's slightly heavier than my 70 to 200, but it's so much much more versatile you know I'd be happy to even pick out a few wildlife shots while I'm out in the field with this thing as well which is not something that I've ever had before in my kit all the time so I'm really looking forward to having this lens in my kit and gives me so much more versatility in my lens selection out in the field so definitely going to be one that's going to be in my bag everywhere I go now so if you're looking for that check out the 100 to 400 even go and rent one is always a good option to see if you you find it as useful as I have all right as always if you're enjoying these videos show me some love support the channel my goal is 5k now subs so subscribing is free it's just like following so if you aren't subscribed and you're watching this video please go down hit the subscribe button hit the bell so you'll be notified when the next video lands and show me some love drop a comment what's the telephoto lens that you use out for your landscape photography the one that you carry around let me know what you think if you've got the 100 to 400 or you've got another suggestion please drop that in the comments below always love to hearing from you and uh, as as always this has been Johnny stay inspired keep creating and enjoy your photography journey and I'll see you in the next one peace